And I've got a peaceful, easy feeling. And I know you won't let me down. Hey. <laughs> well, you beat me. That's great. You know, your excitement is my excitement. Uh, sorry, I was running a little late. I, I, there, well, there was a bald eagle in a tree in my backyard, and I uh, had to stop and look and take a picture. And uh, they're just so huge. So anyway, I love living in a place where there's bald eagles flying around because they're, yeah, they're so majestic and and that, whatnot, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, but I am especially glad you're here today because um, I need a distraction because I'm entering into the tedium phase <clears throat> of the build, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, in that phase for me at least is the body work, the fitting, all of that. So I'm excited that I'm at that phase because that means I'm, I'm you know, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I also suspect that there's, you know, a freight train there and it's coming my way. So um, I'm going to be working on this stuff. And uh, if you at any point think to yourself, well, this is, this is long. You, you know how I feel. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, you're along for the ride. So you get it all. Um, so, uh, doors, hood, door latches, um, side pipes. If we get the side pipes on, well, we got to start the car and listen to it again. Um, so that'll be fun. <sighs> it is exciting. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. Well, uh, Doug Downer, Dwight Downer, no offense to Dougs and Dwights, okay? I know Dougs and Dwights and they're nice people. Uh, they're not downers, generally speaking, uh, but it rhymes or it starts with a D. Well, uh, with that, <laughs> uh, here it begins. Okay, let's talk about things that don't fit. Um, my t-shirts from 1995, okay? Um, this bracket that I'm trying to fit on the car. There's two things already that don't fit. So I'm gonna bring you in. Again, I'm not completely surprised that I'm running into things like this, but I just figured I'd share it because uh, maybe you're building a car and uh, or you're thinking about it. You're not at this point yet and you might get frustrated when you find things out like this. So let's rip the Band-Aid off and just learn them now. So let's uh, take you in here. Let's uh, look at the directions first. Let's set a baseline okay so these are the hood pin mounts um you this is for people with tiny hands but um you put the carriage bolt in carriage bolt from the back side and then you somehow hold that while you're putting the bracket on and then you thread a nut um, I have gotten rid of the uh, polylock nuts in favor of these for test fitting because I can finger tighten these, do all the test fitting, and then I can come back and put a polylock on it later. So you mount it on the side of the, you know, where the hinge mount goes. If you have a hinge assembly, this won't apply. But because I'm going 
base kit, I'm kind of going with what they give me, um, and I'm okay with that. It'll be more race style, hood pins, you lift the hood off, you don't tilt it up, that's fine. Um, so, these brackets, I have it, there's a bracket. Um, they have you kind of hand tightening on, onto where it mounts there, and then kind of fitting it over the top of this bar. And of course you drill the holes and you pop rivet it and then you tighten it. And this has to be, the bracket itself has to be kind of perpendicular, that is at the same plane as the hood. So when the hood pin sticks out of it, it's not sticking out at an angle, it's just sticking straight up. So that's the goal. Okay, so we're, let's take this unmodified. This is a modified, <laughs> that's what I've been working on. So this unmodified example, if we mount it flush with this where the holes go, okay, then you'll bring it up here and you'll know, oh, look, I've got some, these are my lights, okay, anyway. Well, this is supposed to go over top, as per the picture. So if I put it anywhere near that position, then you will notice we're like way off. Those square slots right here are where these holes are supposed to go. And this is supposed to be perpendicular to the hood sort of-ish, kind of. Well, look where it falls. I mean, I don't even know. That's just not even, not even remotely close. Okay, all right, so I've belabored, belabored that point. Let's go to the other side. This is a modified, if you can see the little indents, that's where the bend used to be. Well, now the bend is kind of at a weird diagonal angle also, so anyway, let's, let's just take a look. So it lays flat now. Let's do kind of perpendicular. This lays flat, but not straight. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Pick it up when I'm putting down. And also to get that perpendicular look, I had to grind away further up the slot here. So basically this hole in this thing, I can't, you know, I've only got so many hands here, but the hole here where it fell was above that slot to keep it perpendicular. All that to say, all that to say, either the frame's crooked, which is possible, okay, also, if, if I'm going to nitpick, I've got less of a gap here than I have here. Now the body is where the body is. I don't think it's the body because uh, also when I was mounting the radiator where it mounts down here, it's mounting in a different spot. Like it's a frame issue, it's not a body issue which would make sense to this because this has nothing to do with the body as far as how it mounts, it mounts to the frame. The frame is askew. So I just want to share it, you know? It is what it is. It's not something, you know, it's not something I'm going to call Factory 5 and say, you sold me a frame that's askew. Well, I'm not sure that I would receive a better frame the next time. You know, at some point you just, it's fine, okay? It's fine. It's, it's not, it's only something I'm gonna ever notice. It's a, something a builder notices. Um, uh, but, you know, you'd hope it'd be <laughs> a little closer than that. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna keep building. I'll have to figure out something for the other bracket because also I don't want my hood pins, I don't want one over here and then one over here. You know, I want them 
in line, you know, kind of measurement wise with the hood opening. Uh, so that's what uh, you'll see me struggling with for the next few minutes, hours, days, whatever. I need to get that done so I can start working on the, the back of the hood, the latch, latch part. So um, get the hood centered, get it sitting where it needs to go, set it up for the latches and the hood pins so that, you know, it's where it needs to be. So anyway, back to it. If you're looking for perfect symmetry, well, this engine bay is not for you. Which anyway, the intake isn't symmetric. I mean, just look at it. Nothing is symmetrical. So uh, I have measured from here to here and here to here, and also from here to here and here to here, and I have the same measurements within a acceptable range, which is almost no range, but you know what I mean. This riveted over the top, sort of ish. Again, it's not straight, but uh, you know, it is what it is. This one riveted very neatly, I might say, underneath. So uh, the, so the heights of these are going to be slightly different, but that doesn't matter because there's a ton of adjustment up and down, so height doesn't matter so much as when you the hood is closed, which it will be 99% of the time, uh, you have your hood pins coming through exactly the same place. So I have achieved that. And um, oh, yes, also to do that on this side, to get this moved this way where it needed to go, I have got um, about a quarter inch, I think, of shims there, and then an eighth inch of shims there. So it kind of moved it this way to get the angle right and the distance this way correct. So this is bolted straight on. This one is shimmed out a little bit to achieve the desired place placement. But again, you know, it is what it is. As long as when the hood's closed, it looks proper, you have to consider too. I mean, you don't have to consider anything, but let me give you something to consider when you're building one of these cars. I have restored and rebuilt factory cars. Well, I hate to say it, but there isn't anything really symmetrical about a, a classic factory vehicle, okay? There's not. In fact, if you were to lay your eyes on either an unrestored or a properly restored Cobra, Shelby Cobra of the vintage, um, well, you'd probably notice some things that just seemed a little iffy. <laughs> so we're not chasing perfection. That is a, that is a rabbit trail that uh, I'll allow other people to go down. For me, this car is always about the experience. I want, I want the craftsmanship to uh, 
reflect care, but uh, I'm not going to get bogged down in perfection because perfection does not change the experience of driving the car. This summer, okay, what is it now? We're uh, at the end of February, and this car was delivered to my house uh, December 3rd, I believe, of last year. So um, with a couple weeks off in there, here and there, um, you know, we're only, well, I can't do math, but you know, two and a half months into the build, I wanna be driving this this spring, this summer, this fall. I want the experience of doing that uh, without um, really worrying too much about whether I'm ruining some sort of perfect work of art that I've made. Um, we want good craftsmanship, but we are not worried about perfection. I took that car apart. Wasn't perfect. I still enjoyed it while I had it. So anyway, I'm gonna just step down off my soapbox and uh, I don't know, go eat some lunch or something.
here we are. We have doors. Love the doors. Love having doors. Makes me wish I'd kept the trunk on because then I could look at kind of a complete sort of ish car. I've got the door gaps, uh, you know, gapped. It's, uh, you know, I'm saying you know a lot. It's my new thing. You know, you know, because you don't know because I'm telling you. <laughs> You're about to know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the gaps are not um, like each door has its own unique characteristics to the body of the car. Is that a nice way of saying it? Um, so I, as the builder, did the best that I could. I feel like it's going to be just fine. Uh, the, you know, I've got a little bit of sanding, a little bit of finishing of the edges, things like that to do. Um, but the doors are in, they open and close. And um, this one has a lot bigger gaps than I, I would have liked, but it came how it came. I mean, I did some trimming, but I only did trimming where I had to, to keep it from rubbing, you know? So we're not talking like super, like, I don't know. It's a fiberglass car there, you know, I don't know. I'm just looking, you know, I would love if it met the dash better. I suppose I could build it up and whatever. I don't, I'm not going to do that, but I, I shouldn't ask for too much. You know, it's kind of the same on this side, but different because this is the passenger side and each person in the car has their own unique view and experience uh, that is unlike the other. So what I'm working on now, why I'm uh, actually interrupting this important time lapse of, you know, sanding and mounting and dismounting and sanding and mounting and dismounting and fitting and sanding and mounting and dismounting um, is because it's time to test fit the latches on the door. Um, you know, let's click them open and closed, um, that type of thing. But I've run into a roadblock. It's more like a speed bump, not really a roadblock. Or if it is a roadblock, it's one that I'm going to smash through. Um, so here we go. We're door latch. There you go. See, it says door latch. Turn the page. Okay, remove the door latch striker from the original mounting bracket. Okay, oh, that makes sense. Mm hmm. Okay, yep. Lots of washers. Uh, striker on the chassis with shims. Uh, you know, figure it out where it needs to go, la di da, whatever. Okay, turning the page, there's the finished product, and then we move on to something I've already done. So, let's move over to what I've received. Wait, oh, let me look in the box here. Mm hmm, yep, okay. Hmm. All right, well, I don't see anything that looks like that. So, um, I'm gonna uh, jump online, you know, take the train to information station. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't need any more metaphors or similes. Let's, uh, let me just jump online, see if I can find, I'm sure I can, you know, what these are, how they go together, what they expect me to do. This book here is not helpful at this point. So um, I'll, I'll get back to you. I will let you know how this whole adventure turns out. So uh, yeah, that's all uh, as you were. So what I found out was 
Um, they did. In 2022, they changed the latch because of supplier problems, COVID. In fact, Factory 5 had a um, nice video on there with Dave talking about, um, you know, the problem and the solution and that this latch does not come fully assembled, but it is a better, stronger latch. I know you're hungry, but you know what? It's not dinner time. You got like a whole two hours to go, so go kill something. Um, so, yep, yep, that's true. I'm, I am a meanie. Yeah, I know. Just go kill something. So, I was trying to print out the direction so I could carry it over there, you know, and assemble it. <sighs> you guessed it. My printer's out of ink. Yeah. So, I'm going to just scroll through this and um, I have an exploded view how to put it together. And so I'm going to put one together and uh, I'll just let you know how it goes. Oh my gosh. Paint the cover mounts and latch bases. Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. What is that? Sound damping. Wow, they even give you sound damping pieces. <laughs> it must, the sound damping must be um, because otherwise parts could rattle against other parts, perhaps. Um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, this is riveting, riveting video, isn't it? Watching me scroll through direction. <laughs> I was just wondering how long you'd stick it out. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, let me just work on this, and then uh, you can kind of wander back around when uh, it seems like there's something exciting going on. Let's uh, take a look. So the latches are just bare. I didn't put the cover on them or I didn't put the knob on this, but uh, the new latches push back to unlatch. And um, that one went on beautifully. Uh, this one fought me tooth and nail. I don't know why. I marked it just like I did the other one. But when I installed it on the marks, uh, it, it hit the striker. I don't know what I did, but um, it's very possible that it was a kind of an end of day brain fart, you know? So, um, or not, but whatever. It decided to fight me. So I, uh, but it's installed now and uh, closes. Isn't that amazing? Doors opening and closing and latching. It looks great. Cockpit. So exciting. So next, uh, I am going to sit in the seat, figure out where this needs to go in relation to my eye line and where I can see behind me. Um, 
And then uh, side pipes. That's the next plan is mounting these bad boys. Uh, trying to, I'm sure I'm gonna have to cut out a little bit, you know, to get them to fit, but we'll, we'll just start on one side and go from there. So, very exciting. I don't even know what I'm doing after that. Well, let's surprise ourselves by not figuring that out. <laughs> let's just do this. Because once I get those side pipes on and mounted, of course, we're gonna have to drop the car down, crank her up, see what it sounds like. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can do that very soon. Uh, before it all comes back apart again and the body comes back off and we start uh, my personal favorite, which is, you know, sanding for hours on end and filling and sanding and shaping. And I mean, it's just, it's just great. It's just so fun. <laughs> I'm not convincing you. Oh, I have to get better at that. Okay. Well, let's uh, start fitting stuff. This is exciting. One side done. Um, so what I figured out to do um, was, well, first of all, I had to look at some pictures of some different things. You know, they, I know they don't all fit exactly the same. Um, I did have to trim back this to bring this forward so that my, my downpipe or whatever would it, well, it would line up for everything. So um, I was also concerned about, if you look down, it's closer to the body there than here. Um, but in all of my research in pictures and looking at different things, that's actually not abnormal. So um, it, it kind of comes out and, and kind of swoops back in just a little bit. It's, it's fine. Um, and it also made my bracket fall right where it needed to fall. Um, so it all kind of made sense that way. The other thing was trying to figure out, well, how do I make sure it's level to the body? 
you know, so that when it sits on the ground, um, it's, you know, it follows the, basically the bottom line of the, of the body line. Um, and really the only straight part on the pipe is right here. That's the, the constant because this bells out and, and this uh, flutes down or whatever. So what I did is I stuck a level on the underside of the frame, uh, the two round tubes. Um, and then I've got the back of the car on jack stands and the front on my lift. And I just lowered the car so the car was completely level according to the frame. And then from there, I could take that center section and play around with where it would fall uh, as long as that was level as well. So um, I don't know, is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? Uh, that, that was my way, you know? I did it my way. So uh, ultimately, nobody, you know, it, it looks fine. You know, even if it's a fraction of a bubble off, again, it's fine. Uh, as far as anyone knows, that's the way I designed it. That's the way it's supposed to be. So uh, I've got this side to do next. Um, and then uh, super excited. I keep saying I'm super excited. Uh, there's a reason for that because I'm super excited. Sometimes you can't tell by my visage, but on the inside, I'm just a kid. So, <laughs> uh, all right, well, let me uh, quit uh, stalling. I'm gonna jump onto the other side and do that. And um, man, that's cool. Oh yeah, also, let me tag on to the end of this little explanation. Uh, I didn't end up mounting the mirror. I was setting it down, I sat in the car, there was no place I could put it, being a tall person, where it was useful to me at all. Uh, I've seen some guys mounted up here, but I'm doing the wind wings. Um, it has a rear view mirror, and by law, it just has to have a rear view facing mirror. Really, side mirrors aren't, you know, I mean, that's, as long as you have that, uh, you know, I've owned lots of Jeeps. You take the doors off, no side mirrors, no problem, you have a rear view. And also, I can turn my head and see if there's anybody there. <laughs> so, there's no, no B or C or D or Z pillar. There's just the A pillar. So um, I, may not, uh, I may not put it on. Or if I put it on, it's just for looks because I can't. It doesn't work for me. So uh, to be decided, I actually could mount it after paint. It's just a couple of holes. Uh, I just wanted to get all my holes drilled before paint so that I wasn't walking around a newly painted body with a sharp drill bit, so. All right, let's get to it. I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm testing out my poses for the car show, you know? How do you, I mean, should I wear a Cobra t-shirt, a Cobra hat, or is that too much, you know? You know, hand in, a, hand in the pocket, yeah. Oh yeah, I built it myself, yep. No, don't look too close. <laughs> built it myself. Um, <laughs> it's basically a 94 Mustang. It is kind of fun to see Mr. F 
you know, first version, Mr. F, version two, like, you know, way better. Uh, or way different, at least. <laughs> we don't know if he's way better yet, because I haven't driven him. Anyway, enough goofing off, okay? I'm trying to do an explanation here. Just simmer down. Okay, so, got the side pipes on. The passenger side fought me a little bit. Um, not a lot, but you know, I was trying to create some sort of height symmetry and... Uh, the, 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 the bracketry was, uh, it just had like a half a hole off. Uh, I had to kind of drill it out a little bit to get everything to fit just right, but it did fit. So very, very exciting. I, I'm sorry. I'll come up with another word. Uh, tubular dude. Way cool. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is going off the rails. I want to hear it start. I want to hear exhaust coming out of these pipes. So let's do that, okay? I'm gonna just climb in here. <laughs> Maybe look away. This is probably not gonna be very pretty. You know, I'm like a giraffe. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, that works. I don't even know if the battery's any good. So let's uh, press the clutch in, put it in neutral. Oh, I got a fuel pump. Very cool. Actually, I just got to thinking. <laughs> uh, I'm a little afraid to open the hood now because I was doing all kinds of stuff and moving wires around to, uh, you know, when I was fitting the hood. And I don't know, maybe I had a wire draped across the fan belt. It's too late now. So let's just enjoy the moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. All right. I'm going to have to work on my exit and entrance of the car. Um, you know, so it looks like that I've done it before. Uh, but, you know, just between you and me, we know I haven't done it before, so it's fine. Um, okay. I think we're going to call it quits on this episode. Um, lots of progress, at least in my mind, uh, we got the hood fitted, got the trunk fitted, we got doors fitted, we got the side pipes on, and I don't know what all else we did, because, you know, I don't remember. But uh, pretty sure it's happy hour. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go get something to drink. No, I'm thirsty. <laughs>